Thank you, Presiding Officer. It is a privilege to speak today in this Scottish Government debate, indeed as the first of our new SNP MSPs to make a contribution to this chamber. Walking into Holyrood yesterday, a colleague joked to me that only the important MSPs would get to speak today. So, Presiding Officer, I'll take this as a vote of confidence. <laughs> As the new member for the Mid Fife and Glenrothes constituency, I must begin by paying tribute to my predecessor, the Right Honourable Trisha Marwick. Trisha served my constituency with distinction since she was first elected to Holyrood in 1999, when I was 15. And it was in that same year that I sat in my modern studies class in Fife and watched the Parliament begin again. We visited Parliament in the General Assembly building later that year and I remember asking my MSP, then Ian Smith, the member for North East Fife, how his party would get more women into politics. Now, I can't remember exactly what Ian Smith said, but I am quite sure that even he would not speak favourably of the absence of any women on the Liberal benches today. My passion to teach modern studies was invariably because of my own teachers. I know Alex Hamilton and I share many of the same inspirations in this respect as we attended the same school. Mrs Broom, Mrs Brown, and as I am so much younger than Mr Cole Hamilton, <laughs> Miss Williamson, who is now the head teacher of Glenrothes High School in my constituency. These women taught me to think, they taught me to question, and they all inspired me. Undoubtedly, without their input in my schooling, I would not be here today. When we talk about moving Scotland forward, it's clear to me that we have to begin with education. Indeed, to some extent, we are all linked by school. I know I certainly am in this chamber. To Kezia Dugdale, who I know is not here at the moment, but uh, anyway, whose father was the deputy head at Elgin High School when I was a probationer teacher and who once interviewed me for the school newspaper, The Pigeon Post. <laughs> to Alex Rowley, whose nephew I taught until very recently. And to the First Minister herself, in whose constituency my youngest sister teaches physics. None of us want to see a Scotland which creates an unequal playing field, whether that's on the golf course or in the boardroom. Inequality which begins to emerge at the chalk face needs to be tackled head on. That's why I'm proud this government is committed to targeted funding which will get resources to the schools where, the, where it's needed most. Take Warwick Primary School in my constituency, which has already benefited from this government's attainment fund. Nearly £70,000 of Scottish Government funding is going directly into Warwick, benefiting the school and the local area. Under the SNP, the number of probationer teachers has increased every year since 2010. That's good, but we need to work with local councils to make sure these teachers get jobs. Crucially, we need to make sure that we don't lose talent from the education system. I'll give you an example of what I mean by this. This time last year, as a principal teacher, I was involved in interviewing new teachers for Fife Council. If you're applying as a probationer to Fife Council, then you must complete a generic teaching application form. You're then interviewed and then you wait. You can wait up weeks to find out if you've been successful. And even after that time, you won't necessarily be told which school you're going to. You could be sent to Belbaxter and Cooper or to Beauty in Glenrothes or to Queen Anne in Dunfermline. That's how it is. Now, I know Fife Council are not alone in this approach nationally, but I've got to ask, who does this recruitment process best serve? This government is committed to empowering local authorities. Head teachers will now have more power to direct resources where they see fit. £750 million is being invested to close the attainment gap. Fundamentally, this government trusts Scotland's teachers to make the right decisions about how best to do so. And much like teaching a class, you also need to assess progress. That's why this government has also invested in a national improvement framework to drive excellence and equality in every Scottish school. This government is also committed to teacher education, ensuring that teachers across Scotland are given the right opportunities to develop professionally by funding the qualification for headship, for example. I've been lucky in my decade in education to have taught in three very different schools, a small community school, a large city centre school, a faith school. I was also fortunate in my time as a teacher to be seconded to Education Scotland, supporting the new qualifications. In every school I've visited or worked in, there has been a sense of community which celebrates success and which works to raise ambition in our young people. It's clear that to move Scotland forward, we need political consensus to do so on education. Curriculum for Excellence was the product of the previous Labour Liberal Coalition. It arose out of the national debate on education when I was in my final year at school. Now, 14 years on, we all have a role to play in making sure it works for this generation and the ones yet to come. 
Our new Education Secretary wants to listen to teachers. He wants to hear from parents, from unions and from local authorities. But most of all, John Swinney has made it clear that his mission is to close the attainment gap in Scottish education for every pupil, regardless of their background. Presiding Officer, I don't think that any of us could argue with that. Thank you.